Good day students, welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over how to solve trigonometric equations. Our focus on this tutorial will be on verification. Before we get started um, with some examples, we're going to do a real quick review on some fundamental um, concepts you need to have in mind, some facts you need to have in mind before you can solve trig equations, okay? So this is a real quick um, refresher. If you have your um, unit circle memorized, this should be very easy for you. So what we're going to do is take a look at um, what the sine and cosine of the common angles are on the unit circle. Okay, so let's start from, if you have 0, 1, 0, that's the pattern you start with. The x coordinate is a cosine and the y coordinate is sine. Okay, so this chart basically tells us that um, cosine 0 is 1 uh, and sine of 0 is 0. Okay, so let's go ahead and insert more rows for the other common, um, common angles on your unit circle. I'm focusing on quadrant 1. Okay, so we have pi over 6, which is 30 degrees, pi over 4 which is 45, pi over 3, which is 60 degrees, and then pi over 2, which is 90 degrees, all right? So um, starting with sine, at the end, it's going to invert to 0, 1. And if you remember your unit circle coordinates, you have 1, 2, 3. Divide everything by 2. So 1, 2, 3, divide everything by 2, and you take your square roots. The square root of 1 is 1, root 2, root 3, and there you have it, okay? So starting from sine, it goes 0, 1 half, root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, and then 1. And then cosine goes in the reverse order, starting from pi over 2, you have 1 half, root 2 over 2, and root 3 over 2, okay? So what does this chart tell us? It tells us that sine of 0, as I indicated earlier, is equal to 0. Sine of pi over 6, or 30 degrees, is 1 half. Uh, sine of 45 degrees, which is pi over 4 in radians, is root 2 over 2. And uh, sine of pi over 3, which is 60 degrees, is root 3 over 2. And lastly, sine of pi over 2, which is 90 degrees, is 1. Okay? Sine of 0, if you think about your co-function identities, um, the complementary angle, the complement of 0 is 90 degrees, okay? So the co-function of sine pi over 2, I'm sorry, of sine 0 is cosine pi over 2. All right? And that's manifested in this chart right here, cosine pi over 2 is equal to 0, and sine 0 is equal to 0. What's the co complement of pi over 6 or 30 degrees? The complement of pi over 6 is um, 60 degrees. Okay, so sine of 30 degrees is, is the same thing as cosine of 60, which is uh, pi over 3. Complement of 45 is 45. Sine of 45 degrees is equal to cosine of 45 degrees, or pi over 4. Complement of pi over 3 is pi over 6, or 30 degrees. Sine of 60 degrees is equal to cosine of 30 degrees. And then complement of pi over 2 is just 0. Sine of pi over 2 is equal to cosine of 0. All right? And then we're going to be using this chart along with our reciprocal and quotient identity. So remember that cosecant theta is 1 over sine. Uh, secant theta is 1 over cosine. Um, tangent theta is a quotient identity, which is sine over cosine. Cotangent is also a quotient identity, which is a reciprocal identity too. So we just reciprocate this. Cosine theta over sine theta will give us um, 
cotangent theta. So these are the facts that we're going to be using to solve, um, to verify that the indicated solutions to the trig equations that we'll be looking at are or are not solutions. All right, let's uh, write down the instructions. Instructions are for us to verify, verify that each x value is or is not a solution uh, to the given trig equation. So some of them might be um, solutions, some might not be. All righty, so for number one, let's say we have two sine x minus one equals zero. There goes our trig equation. An equation with a trig function is known as a trig equation, okay? So let's say we have two x values, pi over six and pi, I'm sorry, and uh, five pi over six. Are these two solutions to this trig equation? So if you're given an equation and um, you're asked if a particular x value is a solution, how do you verify? What you do is you plug in and check, right? So let's start with the A solution. What we're going to do is we're going to plug in <clears throat> pi over 6 for x and uh, check for x and check. See if we get a true statement or not. If we get a true statement, it is a solution. If we don't, then it's not a solution. Okay, so the original problem was 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. Uh, so we're going to plug in pi over 6 for x. <clears throat> Subtract 1. Is this equal to 0? Is it? Now, if you remember the chart that we looked at, sine pi over 6 is 1 half, okay? So we have 2 times 1 half is 2 times 1 half minus 1. Is it equal to 0? 2 times 1 half, you just multiply across horizontally. Is 2 minus 2 over 1 equals 0? Or you could cross-reduce if you wanted. Is 1 minus 1 equals 0? Zero is, is zero equal to zero? Certainly is. So what does this tell us? It tells us that um, <clears throat> pi over six is a solution to the equation, right? Is a solution to the equation because we ended up with a true statement upon substituting the value. Okay, now if you have any questions about this uh, problem or any uh, other problems that we work on in this tutorial, just place your question in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to address it. Now let's take a look at the B part. <clears throat> we have to test if 5 pi over 6 is a solution to this equation. So how are we going to do that? Um, well, we just do what we did in part A, right? We're going to plug in, plug in uh, 5 pi over 6 for x and check to see if we end up with a true statement or not. So the original problem was 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. Plug in 5 pi over 6 is 2 sine 5 pi over 6. minus 1, is it equal to 0? Now what is sine 5 pi over 6? Well to do this we have to um, take a detour. We need to um, find what, um, let's find what sine 5 pi over 6 is. The reason why we're having um, some problems in this particular part is that 5 pi over 6 is not on that chart that I showed you, okay? It's not a reference angle in the unit circle. So how do we find um, sine of 5 pi over 6? Well, we just have to find out the reference angle and the sine of sine um, in the quadrant that this angle 
lies in, okay? So you just find a reference angle on the appropriate sign and we're good to go. To help us to do that, um, we want to <clears throat> determine where this angle lies in relation to um, the axis angles, either pi or two pi, okay? Because remember your reference angle is always measured to or from pi or two pi. So <clears throat> how can we express this as a combination of another of a reference angle that would take us to um, pi or two pi. So what, what you want to note is that um, <clears throat> five pi over six is just, is how far is five pi over six from pi? It's not too far. Five pi over six is just pi over six radians away from pi. Okay, so what quadrant are we looking at here? What quadrant is just 30 degrees away from uh, 180? Let's go ahead and sketch it. <clears throat> so, pi, pi over 6 plus pi over 6 equals pi. This is pi right here. So, the terminal side should be somewhere right here. Okay, so this angle is 5 pi over 6. <clears throat> So we want to express this using the reference angle. So the reference angle that we're going to be using for this is pi over 6. Okay? We need the reference angle and something else. What is that? We need the reference angle and the sign. So all students take calculus. That acronym will help us determine what the sign of sign is in this quadrant, quadrant 2. We have S. That tells us that sine and cosecant are positive, so we have sine here, so sine is going to be positive on this quadrant. So what does this all this work tell us? It tells us that sine of 5 pi over 6 is the same thing as positive sine of pi over 6. And what is sine of pi over 6? Sine of power 6 using the chart is 1 over 2. All righty. So now we know what sine 5 power 6 is. So let's go back to the original problem. 2 sine 5 pi over 6 minus 1. Is it equal to 0? Let's restate the question. We have determined that sine 5 power 6 is 1 half. So it's 2 times 1 half minus 1. Is it equal to zero? You can cross with those. Is one minus one equal to zero? One minus one is zero. Is zero equal to zero? Absolutely. So what does this tell us? It tells us that x equals five pi over six is a solution to the the equation because it resulted in a true statement upon substitution all right let's try number two uh for question two let's consider the following um trig equation cosecant x minus two equals zero so we're given two answers here that we're to determine if they are or not uh solutions to the given um, to the given quad, um, trick equation. Okay, so there goes the two options. Now let's start with the a one. How do we know if this is a solution to this trick equation? Well, we're gonna plug in plug in uh, pi over six for x and check. Okay, as we did before. Let's go ahead and do it. So we have cosecant of x minus 2 equals 0. That was the original statement. So the question we're going to be asking ourselves is, is cosecant of pi over 6 minus 2 equal to 0? Is it? Now, we have a problem. On the chart I showed you, we don't have cosecant. We just have sine and cosine. So we need to find what on earth cosecant pi over 6 is. So um, you want to recall that cosecant is related to sine. All righty. 
cosecant theta is the reciprocal of sine theta. So if I know sine, just by simple reciprocation, I can determine what cosecant is. All right? Sine pi over 6, we know what this is. Sine pi over 6 is uh, 1 half, right? So that automatically follows that cosecant pi over 6 is the reciprocal of 1 half, which we can write it as 1 and 1 half. 1 over 1 half, if you reciprocate it, drop change flip, you end up with 2 over 1, which is just 2. Okay? All right. Now that we know that, we can now go back to the original problem. Cosecant pi over 6, restating the question, minus 2, is it equal to 0? Cosecant pi over 6, as we have determined here, is the same thing as 2, is equal to 2. So cosecant pi over 2 is 2. Is 2 minus 2 equal to 0? 2 minus 2 is 0. Is 0 equal to 0? Absolutely. So what's the conclusion? The conclusion is that x equals pi over 6 is a solution. Okay, it is a solution to the equation. All right, now let's take a look at the B part. Um, what if, uh, what of 7 pi over 6? To verify if it's a solution or not, we're going to now plug in uh, 7 pi over 6 for x in and check, okay, to see if we get a true statement or not. So original statement, cosecant x minus 2 is equal to 0, the original equation. So we are going to plug in 7 pi over 6. So it's cosecant 7 pi over 6 minus 2. Is it equal to 0? OK, cosecant 7 pi over 6. We don't have this trig function on the, our chart. Neither do we have this angle. So we have two things that we have to rectify. So let's take a detour to figure out what cosecant pi, 7 pi over 6 is. So let's find cosecant 7 pi over 6 uh, with our unit circle. And then we'll come back and substitute it in here and see if we end up with a true statement or not. All right, so first of all, let's deal with cosecant. Um, cosecant um, 7 pi over 6 is the same thing as 1 over sine 7 pi over 6. We know what we know how to do with sine. We don't want to do it with cosecant. So now let's go ahead and now find what sine 7 pi over 6 is. So sine 7 pi over 6 is equal to what? What is it? So now can we express this um, using its, relation, its distance from pi or 2 pi um, and a reference, a common, um, a reference angle, one of the common reference angles. 7 pi over 6 is slightly above pi, okay? So it's going to be, we're going to be measuring the distance from this angle to pi, which is the closest x-axis. So 7 pi over 6 is equal to pi plus pi over 6. So what does this tell us? It tells us that we're going to be in the third quadrant, OK? Let me, let's take a look at a visual of what we're talking about here. Let's locate 7 pi over 6 on our unit circle. So right here, this is pi. All you just need to do, do is go 30 degrees more, and you're at 7 pi over 6. 30 degrees in radians is pi over 6. Okay, so if you rotate like this from here to here, oh, that looks terrible. Let's do it again. So if you go from here to there, that's 7 pi over 6. But I need to figure out the reference angle of this angle right here. Basically, the angle measure from this terminal side to the closest x axis. So there you have it right there. And this angle is pi over 6. 
Okay. Now, what's the sign though? We need the reference angle and we also need the sign. We know that uh, we have all students take calculus. This T right here in quadrant three tells us that only tan and cotangent are positive. Everything else is negative. Cosecant is neither tan nor cotangent. So guess what? It will be negative in this angle, in this quadrant. So also we'll sign, okay? Because when you reciprocate, um, the sign does not change, right? So sine is going to be negative. Cos um, cosecant is going to be negative here also. So what does this uh, tell us? It tells us that um, sine of 7 pi over 6 is equal to negative, because we're in the third quadrant, sine of the reference angle pi over 6. Okay, now this is a language we understand, right? Because sine and pi over 6 are both on our chart. Sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Okay, so sine of 7 pi over 6 is 1 half, it follows that cosecant 7 pi over 6 is the reciprocal of that, right? Which is negative 2. Now we are ready to go back to the original problem because we know what cosecant 7 pi over 6 is. So let us restate the question, um, the statement that took us on this detour. Cosecant 7 pi over 6 minus 2, is it? equal to zero that was the question cosecant 7 pi over 6 is negative 2 is negative 2 minus 2 equals 0 negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4 is negative 4 equal 0 the answer is no this is a false statement so what can we conclude x equals uh, 7 pi over 6 is not a solution To the equation okay it's not a solution to the equation there you have it thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation really appreciate it if you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your study of um, uh, analytic trigonometry do give us a thumbs up your positive feedback is very valuable to us as indicated earlier if you have any questions or comments just place it in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to um, support you. We up upload videos to our web page on a consistent basis. So do subscribe to our channel for updates to other tutorials such as this. More clips can be found on mathgodserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.